This video is a preview of exponential functions, which a little later in the course we will explore some very nice applications such as mortgage with finance application or population growth, bacterial growth, and decay, and so on. And first, let us answer some questions. What is an exponential function? How do we distinguish it from other functions? How do we sketch a graph? And finally, we'll solve some equations with exponential functions. So what is an exponential function? Is, for example, y equals x squared, just because it has an exponent, is that an exponential function? What about y equals 2 to the fifth? Well, the answer is none of them are exponential functions. Why? Well, let's take a look at how it's defined. Notice exponential function has x, a variable, and the exponent. And this is actually what varies. And the a, the base, that's actually constant and does not change. So y equals x squared is not an exponential function because the exponent is 2 and it does not change. It's a constant. And even though we have a variable on the base, it is still not an exponential function. Same thing for y equals 2 to the fifth because that's simply y equals 32. And that's a constant or a horizontal line of the function. So what is an example of an exponential function? Well, how about y equals 1.5 to the power of x? And yes, this is an exponential function by definition. Now, let us define exponential functions with positive base, simply to make them continuous. We'll take a look at two cases or two different camps of exponential functions. One would be growth, and that's simply whenever the base is bigger than 1 will have a growth. Let's take a look at an example of a growth equation, which is y equals 2 to the x. First, let us make a table with some values. Now, let me remind you guys, a to the power of negative x is actually 1 over a to the x. Or, if we're dealing with fractions, it's much simpler to flip it and make the power positive. So notice the actual value is still positive, but now a is in the denominator to the power. So notice if the power is negative, negative 2, that means 2 to the negative 2 would be 1 over 2 squared, which is equal to 1 fourth, and so on. So negative 1 would give us 1 half, 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 power is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So let's take a look at the graph. Let us scroll down. And here we go. Here's the graph. Notice here is 0, 1. Here is 1, 2. Here is 2, 4. And notice for positive x, the function grows. In fact, it grows very fast. And exponential growth is sort of an explosive growth. Now notice when x is negative, it goes down to zero. But would it ever actually cross x axis? Well, the answer is no, because 2 to the x, no matter how small, would still be positive. It would never be zero. So we have something called an asymptote. Whenever the function follows it but never touches it, it automatically becomes an asymptote. And so y equals to zero x axis would be a horizontal asymptote for this exponential function. So this is a model of an exponential function of any growth. As long as we don't have shift, any y equals a to the x, as long as the base is bigger than 1, whether it's 3, 100, or even e, as we'll notice a little bit later, we will have a graph like this, which will have the following characteristics. The main would be all real numbers. We can plug in anything for the x. The range would be all positive numbers. It's all y's. Notice we start with 0 with parentheses, which means it's not included, but it's still the lowest value up to infinity. Y-intercept is the point 0, 1 right here. There are no x-intercepts for the standard one. And there is a horizontal asymptote, as we said, y equals to 0. 
these characteristics would be the standard characteristics of all exponential functions, as long as there are no shifts occurring. So pay attention to these ones. Now, the second case is the case of decay. And this is when the base is between 0 and 1. Oftentimes it's a fraction, but we can also write it as 2 to the negative x. If you recall, we can flip it and make it positive. And notice the values have the opposite effect. So this function, when we're reading left to right, is actually decreasing. Let's plot all the points. So the same characteristics are true, but this is an example of a decreasing or dying off function. So, let's take a look. What if we have shifts? And the nice thing about shifts is that we don't have to make a table. If we give the original function y equals 2 to the x, for example, in mind, what are the shifts? Well, for example, negative 1 right here is outside. It actually applies to the y of the function. So it represents an up or down shift, a vertical shift. Now notice the 3 right here is together with the x, with the exponent. And so that represents a left or right shift. So if you recall, left or right, if it's positive, that means it shifts is 3 to the left. And the up and down are more straightforward. So negative 1 means 1 down. So how do we draw it? Well, first we pay attention to the original asymptote. Where does that move? Well, that only moves if we move up or down to the shift. Since we do have a shift 1 down, note that the asymptote also moves 1 unit down. So now it's at negative 1. And one point we always know for any exponential is 0, 1. Where does that move? Well, that moves 3 units to the left. 1, 2, 3, right here at negative 3. And 1 unit down. So currently it's at negative 3, comma, 0. And that's how the graph, the basic shape is the same. So we just basically move the asymptote and the intercept. And that's it. So let's take a look at another example. y equals 4 to the negative x minus 3. If we recall that negative exponent means 1 fourth to the power of x. The shift is 3 units down, because it's outside of the function. So how do we graph it? If it's just shift down, you recall, we move the asymptote 3 units down, so it's now it's at negative 3. And the point intercept was at negative 1 originally, and it moves 3 units down also. So 1, 2, 3, and now it's at negative 3. And that's it for the graph. Now the domain in this range, the domain of this graph would still be negative infinity, infinity. The range, however, would be negative 3 is the lowest value, so whatever the asymptote is. So it would be negative 3 all the way up to infinity. That's how we find it. Now let us take a look. What if we have a reflection. What if we have y equals negative 3 to the power of x minus 1? So here we have two things happening. We have a reflection, an upside down version, and we have a shift left to right, but because of the minus, it's actually one unit to the right. So how does the reflection look like? Well, basically we'll have still the same asymptote at y equals 0. But the graph would be, it would be upside down. That would be the reflection of the original graph. And instead of positive 1 right here, the intercept would be at negative 1. So here we have the flip function, but instead of the negative 1, we also have shift 1 to the right. So the new point would be a positive 1, negative 1. And that would be our graph. So the domain, again, would be negative infinity to infinity, and range would be from negative infinity 
because it goes all the way down, all the way up to zero, which is where the current reactant is, because it's upside down. 